What's up everybody? Welcome back to Diesel Creek. My name's Matt. Behind me, my old pickup truck and my new pickup truck. After hundreds and hundreds of comments left by uh, viewers just like you, anywhere this thing makes a little cameo in the background or something, people have been leaving comments for months now saying, did you get a new pickup truck? Did you get a new pickup truck? Yes. <laughs> I bought a 2021 Ford F450. That's right. After 10 years of dedicated service, Old Blue here is going to be heading out to pasture. So as a lot of you know, I am into old machinery, old trucks, old everything. So why would I go out and buy a newer pickup truck? Well, there's a few reasons and we'll get into them in this video. But first off, Old Blue here. Old Blue has been a fixture on the channel since before the channel. I bought this truck back in December of 2012 and I bought it with 62,000 miles on it. And I drive it all the time, but I really don't do a ton of long haul trips with it. So she's sitting at 170,000 miles right now, I believe, and uh, still runs like a top, still a great truck. And uh, it's just, I've kind of outgrown it. So Old Blue, what is Old Blue exactly? Well, Old Blue is a 2003 F350 Power Stroke Diesel and a lot of people always comment on the video saying it's a 7.3 and it is not. This is the dreaded 6 liter power stroke diesel. I say dreaded just because that's how most people view them. I actually have quite a different view. After 10 years of service and some admitted shortcomings on the 6 liter, I still come out on the other side saying that I like the 6 liter. It has treated me just fine and after you kind of do your research on these trucks and know what to keep an eye on and what problems are common and how you should take care of the thing, it can give you quite a good service life. And uh, I mean, this one's just barely broken in at 170,000 miles. The problem up here in the Rust Belt of Pennsylvania is that, well, it's rust. So this truck has actually been into the body shop and had some significant patchwork done to it once already in the past. And there's some places that's starting to get soft yet again. And I'll admit, I don't do the best job at keeping these things super, super clean. They are work trucks at the end of the day. It's not a showpiece. I'm not out here polishing the thing every day. And frankly, I just don't have time to keep a truck in super, super clean, great condition. The old girl has been through some stuff. It's kind of like an old loyal dog. I'm going to be quite sad to not be driving this thing every day anymore. But interior wise, she's, well, she's pretty filthy because it's just the thing that gets neglected. When you got to go out and turn the key every day and go somewhere, you, uh, you really don't end up spending that much time keeping it clean, unfortunately. You guys have probably seen in videos past quick glimpses of the interior of this truck. And in those past videos, it's always jam packed with tools. The whole back seat was hogged up. Uh, originally, when I first started driving this truck, the back seat was reserved for old Roscoe. He would pretty much be my shotgun rider all the time. And uh, over the years, starting to work more on my own, I had to prioritize tool storage over Roscoe. And therefore, the back seat was made inaccessible for the poor pup. So the original bed on Old Blue here rotted away on me pretty bad. It was just a standard eight foot box. And I thought that hauling buckets around and attachments for the skid steer, the flatbed would serve me well. And I was right, I've really been pretty happy with this flatbed overall. It's a North Star built flatbed. I believe the hitch on this truck was rated for 16,000 pounds. And the gooseneck ball, I believe, was rated for 23 or 25,000 pounds. I really, I'm not a gooseneck person, so I don't pay, pay much mind to that. My complaint about this bed has been rust and rot. There's places like right down here around these taillights that uh, just hold dirt and moisture and salt and grime and causes it to rot out in quite a hurry. The bed was put on in 2015, I believe. The old bed was actually so rotted, the fenders were good in it, but the old bed was actually so rotted that when I was cutting the bolts off to lift the old bed off, when I cut the last bolt for the gooseneck plate, 
uh, the floor actually gave out and I fell through the bed. That's how rotted out the old bed was. The cross members in it were completely gone. And uh, yeah. And uh, I fell through. Anyways, I don't think you guys are really here to uh, see me wax poetically about old blue here. Like I said, it is kind of a, an old dog situation where you just hate to see it go. But I did pick up this beauty. This is a 2021 Ford F450 crew cab, 6.7 diesel. And I loved old blue, but man, this thing is a rocket ship compared to old blue. Diesel technology has come quite a ways in that time between 2003 and 2021. And the power that the 6.7 diesel makes these days is incredible. And I actually just saw an article today saying that the new 6.7s are gonna put out even more power and they're gonna jump the tow ratings up for these trucks even more, which is incredible when I tell you because the tow ratings on this truck are already unbelievable. Now it's a single rear wheel, so it's not really an apples to apples comparison. But the 2003 F350 here was rated to pull 18,000 pounds on the factory gooseneck and I think 12 or 14,000 on the bumper from the factory. From the factory, the 2021 F450 here is rated to pull a whopping 36,000 pounds. That's right, you heard me right. 36,000 pounds on the gooseneck. And, and uh, in my mind, a jaw-dropping 24,000 pounds on the ball hitch. That's right, I can tow with the ball hitch 24,000 pounds. And if 36,000 pounds didn't impress you from a pickup truck platform, the new F450s that I just saw the article about today are rated to pull 40,000 pounds. It's unbelievable that what they're doing with pickup trucks today. And that was the primary reason for me deciding to go ahead and upgrade trucks here. As you guys know, I do a lot of towing and pulling equipment around and going out and salvaging stuff. So having a good tow rig that can pull heavier loads is definitely something that is, uh, well, just about necessary for me. More than one time, Old Blue here has been significantly overloaded and uh, come through with flying colors, but that's how you hurt these trucks. When, you, when you're overloading them or tuning them up real hot and making more power than they're designed to from the factory, that's where the shortcomings for the six liter become quite apparent unless you go completely through the motor and completely build it for that purpose. So I am a gearhead, yes, but I'm really not the kind of guy that wants to go and dump a ton of money into performance parts or popping up a vehicle and making it some hot rod. That's really not what I'm about. I like using things for their intended purposes. And, um, you know, if you can do some simple tweaks and modifications to get a little more out of them, so much the better. So all I ever did with the six liter here was I put a five inch turbo back straight pipe on it because that helps a lot with EGT temps, exhaust gas temps. Keeping those lower is definitely something that helps improve the lifespan of the six liter. So so I put that on there, not for the, uh, the lovely acoustics that it makes, and it does sound sweet. So as you can hear, it sounds amazing, and in fact, the six liter power stroke probably has, in my mind, one of the best sounding diesels and turbo whistles um, that's out there. And especially when they got a five inch straight pipe on it. If I hear one of these things going down the highway or running through town, well, A, you can hear it across town because it's that loud, but B, it's just got a certain note to it that I can tell it from a mile away. And uh, I, just, I do like the way they sound, but it gets old. I'm at an age now where I don't want to be sitting and listening to that thing for six hours on a road trip. That starts to get on your nerves. And it's going to probably end up causing me hearing damage, if not from the loud exhaust. The fact that you have to turn the radio up so loud to hear it over top of the exhaust, something's going to end up damaging my ears. And this thing, you can barely hear it running. So 
So aside from the obvious differences, one being that the new one is a four door, old one is a cab and a half. And uh, I used to be a staunch advocate of single cab and cab and a half trucks. And I always said that uh, four doors was uh, not really a, a real truck, but I can't deny at this point that it is super nice to have extra storage and down the road if we end up having a family or something it'll be nice to have that room for whatever i need to throw in the back here just like the old truck i already have it <laughs> loaded up with junk so i've got some plans in the works that we can hopefully uh, fix that up and not have to have so much junk littered in the back seat here I, I picked up this truck back in august and my original plan was to yank the bed off and put a service bed on it and I'm kind of on the fence about what style of service bed that I'd like for this truck. I want to still be able to haul stuff in the bed. A lot of service beds make that kind of tough. I'd like to have lots of tool storage. The other part of me says, well, you got a shop now. You're not going to be doing as much on the road uh, work. I mean, it'll still happen. We got to throw some tools in the truck and go out for a recovery or a, revive and a revival or something like that. But, uh, you know, you shouldn't really be completely working out of the truck anymore once the shop is completed here. So I'm still on the fence about what exactly is going to happen with the box on the back end there. But working with a working with a flatbed for so long and then switching back to a regular pickup box is not fun. I, I miss the flatbed a lot. There are perks to having a tailgate and whatnot, but um, you know, all those can be pretty much mitigated. So Ford gets made fun of for this feature a lot people that like to pick on Ford at least. But I tell you what, as silly of a feature as this looks like at, at a glance, it is super nice for being able to get up into the back of your truck. It saves your knees, you don't have to jump jump out or climb in or any of that. And uh, it's, it's really convenient actually for getting things out of the big box that you can't reach from the ground or whatever. So I got a 98 gallon fuel transfer tank on the back here. I got the toolbox from Old Blue there. I got the pack rat box from the Jeep Cherokee. I used to have this hiding in the Jeep Cherokee and I was kind of working out of that thing for a while. So I've got a lot of tools crammed in here and uh, it, I really like these pack rat boxes. The only thing I don't like about it is there's no good way to fasten it down to the bed without drilling a bunch of holes in the bed. So it's kind of just sliding around in here right now but the good news is it's too heavy for anybody to pick up and steal in one piece and when i lock the doors of the truck the tailgate locks and you can't get the drawer open to steal anything out of the toolbox ford's had keyless entry like this available for a long time my 2003 could have had this it just doesn't um, but this is super nice you don't have to carry the key fob with you all the time and uh, you can access the doors with or without it Inside here, you can see I'm not bashful about using this thing as a work truck. It has seen some mud already. In fact, the very first voyage it went out on up to get the Bantam drag line hiding back there. It got sent through the mud in the woods and uh, performed valiantly, actually. The tires that are on this truck do not look like they would do well in mud at all. But uh, remarkably, this thing gets around pretty well, especially for as long as it is. I threw some cheap seat covers that I already had laying around the house on here just to protect this thing and I finally bit the bullet and ordered some good ones and I'm hoping that they're going to show up here within the next day or so that we can work those into this video as well. All four power windows, power mirror adjustments, they even fold in on their own. Look at that, getting pretty swanky. I can do without all these features, but you know, it is nice. The one feature that I absolutely demanded if I was gonna go spend the ridiculous money on these trucks that they require these days was heated seats. So the screens, so the refresh rates on these screens probably gonna look a little goofy on camera. In person, of course, there's no flash or strobe effect to these screens whatsoever. Um, but you know, you got all your, your basics and as far as touch screen and everything today, you know, pretty much all the trucks come with the same thing, but down here, heated seats, baby. I was not going to buy a truck and spend the kind of money that they demand these days 
without having heated seats. And man, that can really save a guy's back. So something they do with modern vehicles is overcomplicate the crap out of them. That being said, I much prefer a manual linkage on the floor to engage a transfer case for four-wheel drive over this electronic crap. But it's hard to find these days. I don't know if any manufacturers are actually making them with manual linkage to engage four-wheel drive anymore. So you kind of got to bite the bullet there. But the interior is nice enough. Nothing too fancy or crazy. Uh, Ford does include a bunch of these upfitter switches. So you can hook up all of these to auxiliaries, lights, pumps, whatever in the future. There's a nice dedicated fuse block under the hood that's connected to all these switches in here. So that's kind of nice. I have some plans coming for those in the future. The back window is powered. I never used the back window in old blue because it was just too much of a pain. But I will say having a powered back window is awful nice. One thing I do absolutely hate about this truck None of the power outlets, none of the USB, none of the cigarette lighter outlets, and none of the um, and none of the power inverter AC outlets, none of them stay on when the truck is off. So you got like a minute maybe of charging after the truck shut off and then everything dies. And that's especially terrible for me because I'm constantly charging GoPro batteries in the truck and now I can't. So I've actually been using my Milwaukee top off here uh, connected to the GoPro battery charger and that's how I have to charge my batteries right now. I did read online that there's some way you can reprogram those power outlets and I have yet to try that. So I mentioned that the downfall of a lot of vehicles in our area is rust and rot. Well, worry no more. If you don't know already, all the Ford Super Duty trucks these days, and I believe all the F-150s as well, are made out of aluminum and they don't rust out like these steel-bodied vehicles do. You still have a frame to worry about, obviously, but the aluminum does hold up remarkably well. Even the bed, the floor of the bed is aluminum, which, you know, when you first hear that, you gotta be skeptical, but I've had two or three of these trucks on company jobs, you know, working on pipelines, hucking stuff in and out of the bed all day, every day, literally just throwing it in there. It's a company truck. They don't get babied the way that a personal truck does. And I'll, I'll tell you what, I'm the first to admit, I was super impressed with how well the aluminum holds up to abuse. I mean, there was times when I swear I was doing stuff to that aluminum that would have dented steel, and yet the aluminum was unscathed. I don't know what kind of magic the Ford engineers are working, but it's working. I did buy this truck used. It. This scratch was already here, and it is what it is, it's a work truck. Somebody else put the first scratch on it so I don't have to. That just kinda helps keep from babying it a little bit. What's the purpose of a vehicle if you're not gonna use it for its intended purpose? So I did buy this truck used. I believe it had 52,000 miles on it when I picked it up back in August. We're sitting at 62,000 now and it is officially time for an oil change. I forgot to mention another great reason I love this new truck the turning radius this truck turns so much tighter than old blue that would have been easily a three-part turn with the old truck and not really a good showcase of its uh, maneuverability but this thing would probably turn around inside the circle that the other one would make and it's a longer truck so anyway Got a little dry spot here under the shipping container shop. Let's get the oil changed in this thing. Take a peek under the dress here. Yeah, this is, this is why I don't like nice new trucks. I'm not even gonna lie to you. I doubt that I'll really ever do much mechanical work on this thing. If it's something simple, I might do it, but I honestly have zero desire to work on modern vehicles because engineers got in here and just uh, ruined it for everybody. Where the heck do you even put the oil? Oh, found it. Somewhere underneath this mess is a 6.7 liter power stroke diesel. I think it's down there. There we 
go. Man, that sucker's tight. I don't like whoever put this thing on here last. Way too tight. I mean, I get that you don't want your drain plug to come out, but good gravy. There we go. Whew. Good news. <laughs> the, the magnetic drain plug doesn't have anything on it. I would hope not for an engine with 60,000 miles on it. There we go. I'm hoping and praying that this is the last oil change that I have to do like this. I had that fancy oil pan on wheels that you guys saw a while back on the channel. And that thing's great, but uh, it's just a pain to dig it out, drag it across the gravel and whatnot. Uh, we got the shop built now, so we're gonna be using all that fancy stuff and not having to work like this anymore, I hope unless it's absolutely necessary. All right. Got us a nice new filter here. We're not gonna do what the last person did to us. We're just gonna tighten it hand tight. That's all you ever need to do with an oil filter. Look at that. That's all you need. Just bare paw, snug it up, done. Let's go back up top and put some oil in this thing. Time to put some oil back in this thing. And if you guys have seen the cost of trucks recently and the cost to repair diesel engines like this, you're not gonna wanna take the cheap route. You're gonna reach for the absolute best stuff you can get, which is the same stuff. Uncoincidentally, I ran in Old Blue and that's Rotella T6. This is a full synthetic extreme temperature oil and this stuff is what the power strokes really like. If you're not familiar with modern fuel systems on these things, most modern diesels, in fact, all that I can think of in pickup trucks have a, what's called a common rail fuel system on them. And what it basically does is uses the oil pressure to fire injectors. It runs the oil through a high pressure pump and uses that to individually fire the injectors. So in that process, the injection pump is really putting this oil under some extreme pressure and which builds up a lot of heat in the oil. And I, I, somebody told me in the six liters, and I would imagine it's the same for all of them, when you're doing that uh, firing of the injector, you're actually shearing and breaking down the oil molecules. And that's why you wanna run the full synthetic uh, because it deals a lot better with that kind of abuse and extreme temperature for the injections. Yeah, you never want to cheap out on the oil. I'm trying to keep this truck for a long time. I'm hoping between uh, being able to take better care of it these days, undercoating it and you know, avoid driving it in the winter time and whatnot. I'm hoping that this truck is gonna last me a long, long time. So we definitely don't wanna neglect the, uh, the oil. I was actually just doing some reading on these six sevens here. Make sure I wasn't telling you guys anything wrong. And, uh, I didn't even realize that these trucks have what's called reverse flow heads. So if you think about a traditional V8, you have your intake in the center and exhaust coming out the sides of the heads. This is backwards. It pulls air from the sides and uh, runs it up through the center and the exhaust comes out in the center here. I've always gone 8,000 miles between oil changes on the old truck 
but I've heard some pretty crazy numbers out of some truck drivers and hot shots and stuff that uh, run across country. There's some people claim they can get 15,000 miles between oil changes and those are people that are claiming that because they do sampling with their oil and they send it away and get it tested and I think I might uh, might try to do that on the next oil change here since we know we have T6 in it now. I don't know what was in this thing when I bought it. So if we do those oil samples, I might be pleasantly surprised to find out I can get quite a bit further between oil changes. And that'll be another, another big check in the box for the Rotella T6 here. Well, I guess with that, our oil change is done. All right, my back seat's completely full of junk, and I want to I want to put some new seat covers on, and I want to install a little device that allows you to fold the back seat down, so you can uh, jam more stuff in behind it, and hopefully keep this thing a little bit better organized. So let's get on that. All right, so over here on the passenger side rear, there's actually a release built into the seat, which allows you to fold the rear seat forward and gives you access to the bottle jack for to jack up and uh, change your tire on the side of the road. And there's a good bit of extra space back here. Uh, you could cram some stuff down in around the jack if you wanted to, but the driver's side does not open this way, even though there's the same amount of space behind it. So that's a lot of wasted space, so I have a little special apparatus to uh, hopefully change that. I'm not affiliated with these guys in any way, but Build Right Industries, I grabbed this thing off of Amazon. Pretty darn simple. Um, so hopefully we're going to figure out how to install this thing. According to the directions, there's some sort of a small factory release back here. You can grab with the end of a wrench or something. Just got to find it. There we go. Can you guys see how much room is back here now? All kind of wasted space that Ford's not letting us have access to. So I think we just have to install this bracket onto the seat back here and we'll be able to easily open that up. So, pretty simple here. This is the factory latch. That's the little pin that I had to grab with the wrench back there to open it up initially. And what this thing does is pretty simple. You put this little retainer, you pull this, put this little plastic piece over that nub, and then the rest of the bracket acts as a keeper to keep that thing in place. And then that red thing extends up above the seat, and you can always access that pin much easier so yeah pretty simple all right let's try this thing out there we go i think we'll have to put some lubrication on that thing to get it to slide right but now pull that little red release folds right forward Got it working good now. Beautiful. All right, so again, I got no affiliation with these guys whatsoever. I bought this thing all on my own off of Amazon, but uh, it is a supposedly small business and everything's supposedly made here in the US. So I'm all for uh, giving those kind of guys a shout out. So I'll try to remember to leave a link down in the description. All right, well, last thing I want to do to this truck, I want to put on some good seat covers because it's I have no affiliation with this company either, but these seat covers came from Covercraft, the same people that make 
car covers and these are supposed to be their precision fit seat covers and hopefully that means that they fit nice because I can't stand sloppy crappy cheap seat covers like the ones I have on there currently. Well, 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 would you look at that. I'll tell you what, these things actually do fit pretty darn good. I already got them dirty from kneeling on them and stuff. But uh, the, the, as far as seat covers go, these are probably the best fitting ones that I've been around. And I know what's going to happen. Uh, these things are going to stretch, you know, especially because it's cold right now. The material isn't stretching out and fitting like it would if we were doing this in the summertime. So after people sit on these things for a while, they're going to kind of stretch and work the wrinkles out and stuff. And I'll be able to get in there and actually tighten these up again because they have pretty good adjusters on them. It's a bunch of, uh, you know, clips and you can pull the slack out and whatnot. But these back ones fit good. They're still able to fold the seat up real easy. I like it. I'm still, I had to cut a little slot back here for this back seat release. But we got still got that working good. I just had to slice that a little bit and let that poke out. Passenger side here. Same thing, already just got it a little bit dusty from working on it, but everything fits really good. I'm really happy with that. And uh, that should help keep from tearing up the seats. Because like this area right here where you get in and out all the time, the running boards help so you're not dragging your butt over the seat, but inevitably it still happens. So you end up wearing out the side of the seat. Hopefully these seat covers will prevent that. Oh yeah. That beats the heck out of those cheap seat covers I had in here before. I like this a lot. These feel good. Another big reason I'm excited to have these seat covers in the back here is so I can actually take Roscoe and Meatball with me places now. I have not even had them in this new truck since I've had it. It's December and I've had it since the end of August. So I, uh, I've been keeping them out of it because I didn't want to get the back seats destroyed. So got these good seat covers. They should be easy to keep clean. They don't feel like dog hair will stick to them very well. So that's good. Anyways guys, 
that's all I got for now. I hope this answers all your burning questions about that new red truck in the background. If you guys like the video, do me a big favor, hit the thumbs up button down below. It doesn't cost you guys a thing and it really helps out the channel. If you're not already, be sure to subscribe so you can see what we get up to with this truck in the course of the next year. I've already drug home several things with it and I'm sure it's just gonna keep impressing me. So, but that's all I've got for now. So as always, thank you guys for watching and I will see you on the next one. Later.